All right, Jody Mac with Johnny Mac here on Birds 365. Uh, coming up in ooh, less than 20 minutes from now, we're going to get Hunter Brody up from uh, the best damn, uh, the best uh, show ever uh, to give us some eagle insights for the big game against the Chiefs. All right, two things before we get Hunter up here. Number one, uh, for one of our, our guys here uh, on the stream, uh, the real zeal, who uh, always brings up the fact that I annoyed him when I pointed out the fact that the last game, and this is a question I was going to ask Farzi, we ran out of time. So I'll ask you instead, John. The last game the Eagles actually played into the fourth quarter was the last game of the regular season against the Giants, which is now a month ago, by the way. By the time the Super Bowl rolls around, it will be an entire month since the Eagles were in a game where they actually had to play with something at stake in the fourth quarter. Now, the real seal doesn't like me noting that the Giants did score with a minute and 38 to go, and they did have an onside kick that they could have recovered. They didn't. Reed Blankenship made the play, and the game was over and done with at that point. But the onside kicks every once in a while take wacky bounces. And oh, by the way, the Giants had driven it down and scored two touchdowns in the fourth quarter. You could say that the Eagles were on cruise control, whatever, but the Giants did make that game a game. And the Eagles haven't been in that game a game in the fourth quarter for a month. So, yeah, I have a little bit of a, a concern about that. Uh, just felt I needed to note that for the real zeal. Uh, I hope this Super Bowl doesn't come down to an onside kick either. Uh, we shall see. Uh, but let me take my shot at Chris Sims. I actually did a show with Chris Sims. He was filling in for somebody on WFAN and I was uh, hosting and uh, he seemed like a nice enough guy. I didn't get to know him. We just got thrown together for one show one day on WFAN. So I don't really know the guy well, but you talk about wanting to die on a hill. He refuses to move off this Jalen Hurts is not good enough thing. And on John Clark's podcast, he said uh, either yesterday or the day before that being the Eagles quarterback is one of the easiest jobs in the National Football League. And what he's referencing is, yes, they've got Devontae Smith and they've got A.J. Smith Brown, and they've got uh, Dallas Goddard and they've got Miles Sanders uh, that if uh, you could plug anyone in there, he really did go down previously the Gardner Minshew road even though it happened and Gardner went 0 and 2, Chris. Were you out of the country for those two weeks, Chris? Did you somehow miss that? How what you suggested was actually put into practice and blew up in your face somehow. But he's doubling down. He keeps going down this road, Johnny Mac. And here's the question I have for Chris Sims. I'll ask it of you, and you can attempt to answer it. I don't think there is an answer, but I'd love to see Chris Sims' answer. Last year's two Super Bowl participants, the losing team, unfortunately for them, was the Cincinnati Bengals, correct? Uh, yeah. They've got maybe the most talented triumvirate of wide receivers in the National Football League. Would you put... Very good group. It's Chase very good and group. Boyd and T. Higgins. If you're talking about a group of three... Oh, is yeah. there a team better in the National the Football League? No, right. No, is no. there a team in the National Football League that's got three better wide receivers than Cincinnati's? Um, who's the third receiver in Miami? I, I can't even think of it. But they'd be in the conversation. I'd have to think about it. But they but that's the team I would immediately go to. Best uh, triumvirate, right? Yeah. And oh, by the way, last year Joe Mixon rushed for 1,200 yards and scored 13 touchdowns. So it isn't like they didn't have a running game to balance things. They had one of the best running backs in the National Football League last year. Man, all those people saying last year, being the quarterback of the Cincinnati Bengals has got to be one of the easiest jobs in the National <laughs> Football League because they have these three talented wide receivers and this Pro Bowl-level running back. Anybody could uh, quarterback the Cincinnati Bengals. Oh, nobody said that last year. None. Zero. No one said, well, Joe Burrow is just riding the wave of the Cincinnati Bengals, plug and play any quarterback in there. He had just as much talent around him as Jalen Hurts does this year. Why is it Jalen Hurts is being questioned for this? Well, two things I would say. 
he he doesn't have nearly the offensive line, Joe Burrow. Not even close. Not even not even in the ballpark. Not even in the same atmosphere. Um, but I talk about it all the time. Pedigree. Pedigree matters exactly in the NFL. Right. That's the number one overall pick. And by the way, Joe Burrow's tremendous. Uh, uh, you know, he deserved to be the number one pick. He's proven uh, he's a superstar quarterback already in a very young career. And one of the reasons Joe Banner says, hey, get it done quick with Jalen Hurts is because Joe Burrow's coming down the pike and it's going to go above $47 million. Um, So I have no issues with people liking Joe Burrow. But for, for the people that don't like Look, where's Chris Sims in his career? I'm gonna I'm gonna flip this. Where's Chris Sims? At? He's doing pretty well, right? This stuff works. If you don't if you don't like his opinion, don't share his opinion. Don't show it. Don't get upset about it. Everybody's got opinions. Turn to the next guy that tells you what you want to hear. Um there's hot no, take on Sorry, John, I, I refuse to accept that. When someone is as blatantly off base. As his comments have been, I'm sorry, I'm going to comment on him. And no, if well, that's you can. me giving him what he wants, I don't care. If it's, uh, oh, he's getting pub, he's getting pub because Jody Mack is calling him an idiot. Well, no, that's exactly I'm not, what I'm calling him an idiot. I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about you individually. I'm talking about he's decided to go down a route in his career that a lot of people have decided to go down. And he's not going to admit he's wrong, and he's going to double down. So if you do get upset about it, and I'm talking mainly the Eagles fans here, acknowledge it. I mean, there are local people that do the same thing, and people ask me questions, and I say, well, I mean, what do you want from me? I, you know, Everybody's allowed to have their opinion. Uh, there are certain things that you say that are, you know, if you're going down that route, that come across as ludicrous, and that's one of them with Chris Sims. I mean, the guy's going to be – if he's not second in the MVP voting, third in the MVP voting, um, he's had a heck of a career, a heck of a year. Um, he's sixteen and one as a starting quarterback on the on the team. Those two things aren't mutually exclusive. He's got a heck of a supporting cast, and he's a heck of a player himself. Those two things aren't mutually exclusive. So when you bring in other quarterbacks, you know. Would you rather have Joe Burrow? Would you rather have Jalen Hurts? I, I mean, that's a legitimate argument. That's right, a legitimate so, argument. I would lean towards Burrow. I got to be honest. Okay. I would lean towards and, Burrow. And that, that, that's fine. And you know the reason why I brought Burrow up because I think he's got a tremendous amount of cast. And nary word one about, uh, well, he's riding the coattails of his teammates, which at least one idiotic football player uh, prognosticator has continued to harp on but i i do agree with you uh, you answered my question why and you said pedigree and i think you're right so here would be my follow-up question to you tom brady was a sixth round draft pick at some point tom brady was able to overcome his pedigree and or we as a football uh public decided, all right, we need to let pedigree go. We need to just evaluate what this player has accomplished on his own and forget that he was a sixth-round draft pick. When does that kick in for Jalen Hurts? When do we no longer say, well, yeah, he's judged to a certain light because he was a bottom third of the second-round pick, not the first overall pick like Joe Burrow was. When do you outgrow your pedigree? Maybe the third ring. <laughs> Maybe the third ring. I'll get him there. I'd suggest um, we had done it prior to that with uh, Brady, but that's just me. And by the way, Tom had a bigger hill to climb because Tom was, as you mentioned, six round pick, 199 overall. Jalen was the 53rd pick in the draft. So Tom Brady had a far bigger uh, hurdle. But I remember the first Super Bowl. Maybe I'm exaggerating. The first Super Bowl. Oh, there were a lot of questions about Tom Brady. A lot of people not believing when they beat the Rams. And, you know, that was the Mike March Rams. And still, you know, the greatest show on turf Rams. And he didn't play that well, as I recall, in the game. Um, Kurt Warner. Bailed out by his kicker. 
Yeah. Kurt Warner threw for like 350 in that game. I, I, I don't know. They were the far more explosive, explosive team, but they turned it over uh, a couple times. If Tom threw for 150, maybe, you know, he was not, he was not great in that. So I know it wasn't the first Super Bowl. Um, it might have been before the third. But my point is, it takes a while, Jody. It takes a while. And, you know, to a lesser degree, because it's a lesser position and it's not nearly as important and people don't pay nearly as much attention to it. Nobody believes in T. No, I shouldn't say nobody. I, I get in trouble. There are a lot of people who don't believe in T.J. Edwards. I, I don't know what they're watching. They're not watching. No. They're saying, oh, he wasn't drafted. He ran a 487. He can't be this. He can't be that. Watch the games and see what he is. Yeah, I The fact that moving off one's pedigree is as slow motion as it is annoys me as much as anything about the game of football as, as anything else that uh, at, you, you you have to be able to stay open-minded in evaluating a player and look at what he's done. It, it's the way I evaluate just all of sports in general. There's today. And then you evaluate yesterday and you put more of an emphasis on that than you do the day before that and the day before that and the day before. And the further you go back, the less emphasis you put on it, it's what's happened most recently. And most recently is T.J. Edwards has killed it all year as an Eagle linebacker. Why are we going back to three years ago and the fact that he ran slow at the combine? What the fuck does that have to do with anything? I don't know, but it's real. And it's been real and it's not changing. One of my biggest problems with the draft, and you know I say this all the time, is people, too many people think you draft a good player or a bad player and it stops that night. The Eagles drafted a bad player with Jalen Rager. Bad player. There's no room for improvement. There's no room for this. There's no room for player development. You got a good player or a bad player. When Howie Roseman makes a bad pick, uh, he took a bad pick. It has nothing to do with player development. Jalen Hurts has developed. Would he have done the same thing in another situation? Maybe, maybe not. He's got. He deserves a lot of credit. Um, and I use Andy Reid as the better example uh, with Donovan McNabb in 1999 because there were so many high-level quarterbacks in that draft. And I think if any of them got with Andy Reid instead of a Donovan McNabb, it might have turned on its base. Now, Jalen, because of his own work ethic, probably would have developed. But as well as he's developed here, I can't say that. You know, player development is real. And, and, and when it comes to the draft – too many, too many people who should know better think it stops on that day. Oh, you got a good player, you got a bad player. Doesn't work like that. You're right. Player development, coaching guys up, fits in systems. There's a whole bunch of things that go into what a player becomes over a period of time. Not just number one, top ten, first round. Third round, undrafted. You are so defined by where you are taken in the draft. And it, it it has a carryover effect that just doesn't make any sense to me. But that's that's me. And I think the fact that Jalen Hurts is in, in your eyes and mine. We're both acknowledging this, even though neither one of us likes it. It's just, it, it, it's something as a community that I think football overall has to improve in. That, and well, it's yeah. more media and fans than it is actual football teams, I believe. But uh, I think football teams also put a little uh, emphasis on it as and, well. And Jody, I got to cover one of the greatest undrafted free agents in the history of football. He's in the Hall of Fame now, John Randall. And, you know, the, another part of it, because I could talk to this about TJ as well, sometimes with the, the chip on the shoulder helps. I mean, TJ's got a chip on his shoulder. Because TJ was second in the – in the Butkus Award voting, TJ was a hell of a college player, a hell of a college player. And um, look at the film and say, he's a great player. He's second to, to Roquan Smith. No, no, no. He can't run. We're not going to draft him. He's got a, he's got a chip on his shoulder. John Randall had a massive chip on his shoulder. Now I'm not saying everybody turns into a, a, a pro bowl level player or 
you know, very few turn into Hall of Fame players. But it can work both ways. Tom Brady certainly had a chip on his shoulder uh, from where he was drafted. So sometimes it helps those guys. And if that's working for Jalen Hurts right now, which we were talking about him earlier on how zero pulse and flat line that he is and focused and doesn't get emotional and handles his business as well as he did. He had that little blip last week where he talked about, and some people didn't necessarily want me here in Philadelphia, which just, you could knock me over with a feather because it was Jalen Hurts actually saying something that he was opening, pulling back the curtain a little bit and showing you something, something about himself. I couldn't believe that he did it. Yeah. So he does actually, uh, he's got a memory too. And he does remember yeah. that. Uh, I think, I think that was Carson Wentz, but it might've been Hunter Brody. Who knows? We're going to, oh, you Hunter. think it was Hunter? <laughs> That's who he was referencing? <laughs> no. That's who Jalen Hurts no. was referencing. I saw huh? Hunter pop up in the green room. I yeah. wanted to get a quick smile from him there you there go he is. all right we get a big smile out of him next hunter brody from the best show ever is going to jump aboard give us his chiefs eagles insight before the big game this sunday